The town gates, made of massive oak logs, are currently wide open. There is a heavy oaken bar to secure them at night. One of the tall trees of the forest frames the town gate like a natural archway. An old stump by the side of the road makes a convenient resting place for passers-by. The villagers have erected a scarecrow to keep birds away from the newly harvested corn. Tall shocks of corn have been harvested and wait here to be stored for the winter. Some beautiful giant pumpkins are growing in the field. You take an ear of the corn and put it away in your pack. You've never been very good at making pumpkin pie. You can't take the scarecrow. That would be strawberry. You find five crowns that someone hid in the hollow stump. They're covered with mold and dirt and have obviously been long since forgotten. It's considered poor form to climb the town walls during the day. Try using the gate. To the north you can see the buildings of the town. It looks a little like Spielberg, yet also very different in some undefinable way. The curved staff has a very organic look to it. Its curves seem somehow feminine. You can feel a sense of magical power radiating all around it. The huge boulder raises a solitary wooden staff high above the clearing. You pick some flowers and put them away. Beautiful, out-of-season flowers grow all around the stone monument. Green grass surrounds the monument, heedless of the many feet which trample it daily. It's not a tree. It's a knot in a tree. The trees reach their limbs above the surrounding wall in search of sunlight. The upper branches dance in the breeze. You graciously, but gratuitously, grasp some grass. The stone structure is warm to your touch, and you feel a sense of being protected. The staff feels warm and almost alive in your hand. You hear an eerie voice in your head. This I must first do. The sacrifice of life for one of love. You find yourself letting go of the staff very quickly. It's much easier just to walk through the gate. I would not do that if I were you. You! How did you get here? Why are you here? Few strangers come to Mordavia. I am the Burgomeister. It is my job to know everyone and everything that goes on here. The Burgomeister looks like a strong, hearty man, although he has a sad expression. You don't notice anything special? You don't... This heavy wooden door guards the entrance to the Burgomeister's office. The Burgermeister keeps his windows securely barred. From the sign reading Burgermeister's office, you cleverly deduce that the Burgermeister works here. It's been years since you studied Mordavian, but you think that Burgermeister might be the word for mayor, or perhaps sheriff. You don't know... This is the major entrance of the general store. Colonel Utel? <laughs> And the private quarters are in the Burgermeister's office. This is a well-stocked country store. Various foodstuffs and useful items adorn the shelves. The sign reads, General Store. You wonder how much of a commission the salespeople get. You don't know. This is the Hotel Mordavia, best and only inn in town. The sign simply reads, Inn. I guess that means you should go in. Through the window you can see the innkeeper and his wife bustling about and several townspeople relaxing. The open barrel is about half full of rainwater. 
The water is especially wet this time of year. The Burgermeister stares at you suspiciously. You tell the Burgermeister about how you came here. Do you expect me to believe such a story? That you could walk out of that cave alive? That the cave would be open? Tell me no more lies. My name is Dmitry Ivanov. I am the Burgermeister of this town. Mordavia is a well is surrounded by mountains. There used to be a road which led from here, but heavy rains have created a swamp at the base of the mountain south of here. No wagons can get you in or out, nor can any person, except perhaps you. This is the town of Mordavia. There is an inn and a shop down the street where you can spend the night or get some supplies and be on your way. The sooner you leave, the better for all. There are many dangers in Mordavia, and we certainly do not need a stranger to stir up new troubles. The Hotel Mordavia has rooms and food. It is a safe place to spend the night. Uh, the shop does not carry much. We have been cut off from supplies for a while now. Still, you may at least restock your food rations before you continue with your travels. There are many strange and dangerous creatures that live in Mordavia. Trust nothing. The gates of this town are closed at sunset. Do not let yourself get caught outside after dark, for few can survive a Mordavian night or remain sane enough to speak of it. Just leave Mordavia quickly. No good comes from outsiders and we do not want you here. Leave here quickly. Go, and soon. The Burgermeister looks as if he's a bit more than you can carry. This window doesn't open. This general store is cheery and well lit, thanks to the warm hearth. The first things that you notice are the cats. They seem to be everywhere. Then you see the shopkeeper, sitting on her rocking chair as she knits. She's a very, well, uh, sturdy-looking woman. So, you're the stranger in town. <laughs> I've heard all about you already. You don't notice it. The window looks out on the street and provides some extra sunlight in which the cats can bask. Either garlic is one of the most popular products here, or the shopkeeper ordered way too much and hasn't been able to get rid of it. The shopkeeper does a good business in clocks. Apparently the villagers like to be able to tell when night is approaching. It looks like an ancient temple that the shopkeeper has put up on the mantle as a good luck symbol. It's an ornamental dinner plate. Doesn't every mantle have a candelabra? The cozy cat conveys a calmness most common in comfortable confines. This used to be a knitting basket, but now seems to have become a cat basket. Amazing how that tends to happen. The large ewers are just right for carrying water. This pot is looking a bit blue. Maybe that's because it hasn't been sold yet. The huge brown pot is probably used to store bulk merchandise. Or maybe homemade brownies. It's a nice round barrel, suitable for rockin' and rollin'. This is a store counter. It's covered with more cats than merchandise. The fire helps keep the shop and the cats warm on these cold autumn evenings. Either garlic is one of the... Careful! The cats may explode if you touch them. They're perfectly content where they are. You attempt to have a meaningful dialogue with the cat. It says, Meow. 
Don't do that. You're likely to become a basket case. Uh, please, uh, don't.